Cameron. Welcome to my kitchen. So while we're all working from home and studying from home, I'm gonna be giving you some videos to show you how you can do some science experiments at home so we can still learn even when you're in your own house. So today we're gonna to be doing a whirly gig experiment where we all are gonna to get to be engineers and we're gonna to get to make something that is actually used in the scientific community around the world. So first I'm gonna tell you why this is a thing and then we're gonna make it together. So you may have heard of a disease called malaria. Malaria is a mosquito-borne illness. So mosquitoes can infect a person when they bite them and then that person will get malaria. And the problem is, is malaria is a really bad disease. So it has symptoms that feels kind of like the flu, but it can eventually lead to death if treatment isn't given to people. So we need to be able to figure out who has malaria so that we can give those people the treatment for it. So the way that scientists figured out that you can tell if someone has malaria or not is through their blood. So scientists will take a little blood sample from someone's finger and then they'll put it in something called a centrifuge. So this is a centrifuge. So you can see what it looks like. This is a pretty small one, but even with this tiny one at this size, they're really expensive. And so even bigger ones are even more expensive. So the way that this works is that scientists take some blood. So I have a tube here and inside my tube, I have some water and some cornstarch and some red food coloring. So it's not real blood, but it looks like blood and it's gonna work like blood. So you can see that it's all just red liquid right now inside this tube. And what I'm gonna do is put these tubes inside of my centrifuge close it and then turn it on for a few seconds and you see that it spins really fast so now when I take my tubes out you can see that all the cornstarch is at the bottom and the liquid at the, is at the top so the reason is because when it's spinning like this, but a lot faster. It's just like the Gravitron ride that maybe you've rode at the state fair where you get in and you go up against the wall and then it spins really, really fast and you can't move because it's pulling you down. So the same things happen inside the centrifuge and all the really heavy particles, so in this case cornstarch, get pulled to the bottom and all the liquid stays at the top. So the way that this works with trying to figure out if someone has malaria is that when you put a blood sample in a centrifuge like that, Blood samples have white blood cells and red blood cells. So the white blood cells are a lot heavier than the red blood cells. So the white blood cells go to the bottom of the sample and the red blood cells stay at the top. So you can see a difference in them just like you can in these tubes. So that it would look like this is white blood cells and this is the red blood cells. So when someone has malaria, some of their cells get altered a little bit and they look a little different. And they're a little less heavy than the white blood cells but they're still heavier than the red blood cells. So what you end up seeing is if someone has malaria, they have an extra line in their sample. So instead of just the white blood cells and the red blood cells, there's an extra line in between of a special kind of cell. And that lets doctors know that that person has malaria. So the problem with the way that doctors can tell whether or not someone has malaria is that some places where there's a lot of malaria because it's really warm and there's a lot of mosquitoes, don't have access to really expensive instruments like this. Also, this took a power cord with a lot of electricity and some of those places don't have electricity. So it was hard for doctors in these really rural places to figure out whether or not someone actually had malaria. So what they did was a group of scientists at Sanford University got together and this one guy realized that there was a toy that kids play with that actually didn't need electricity, wasn't very expensive, but made a lot of force so that it could spin something really fast, just like a centrifuge. So that was the whirly gig. So that's what we're gonna make today so that we can act just like the scientists who are diagnosing malaria and see how it works in action. So what you're gonna need for this is a button and some string. So when you are making your whirly gig, you want buttons that are symmetrical. So something like a square or a circle. Um, something like a heart wouldn't work, but any 
shape that's the same on all sides will work. And then you also want one that has four buttons. So you see that this one has four buttons, or four holes in the button, I'm sorry. So you want all four holes to be in your button. So it doesn't matter exactly what size the button is, it can be a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller and it will work just fine. And then you are also gonna want a piece of string. So this is twine that I've cut about three feet long. It can be a little bit longer or shorter, it doesn't have to be exact, but about this long. And what you're gonna do is you are gonna take the end of your string and you are going to put it through the hole of the button. So once you have it in there, you're gonna to wanna to put it back through another hole. And you are gonna to want to use the hole that is diagonal to the one that you came through. So not the ones on either side, but the one that is diagonal from the hole that you put it in the first time. So I'm gonna do that now. And then, once you have your string through your buttons, you see that it's through the diagonal holes, you can take the string and you can tie it on both ends. So I'm just doing a double knot. And then, I'm going to take the string that's at my button and pull it through so the button is in the middle. So this is my whirly gig. And now that I have a whirly gig, I'm going to show you how to use it just like a centrifuge. So this can be a little bit tricky and sometimes it's a little bit hard. So if you have problems with it, don't worry. If you just keep trying, eventually you'll get it. It sometimes takes a little bit of practice, but that's no problem. So what you're going to do, the way that I found to make it the easiest, is I put my hands through the string. So it's on my wrists. And then I grab this button that's in the middle. And then I start spinning it. So the way to make your whirly gig work the easiest is to spin it a lot of times. So I keep my string kind of straight and I keep spinning it. The more times that we spin it, the more rotations our button can get. So that's why we want to spin it so many times. And you see that on both sides, my string is wound up together. So now what I'm going to do is release it and pull it. And you see that it can keep spinning multiple times. So let's try again. See if we can get it a few more times. So that time I think it did it twice. Let's see if we can get it to do even more. So the more times you practice, the more times you should be able to get it to spin. So we'll keep doing this. We'll try one more time. So I'll pull my button, there we go. And you see that now I'm getting it multiple times. You just keep releasing and then letting it spin back. And you see that the button goes really fast. If you keep practicing, you may can even get more times than that. And so how is this like the centrifuge? So I'll tell you, um, what the scientists did is that they took the tube with the one drop of blood in it that they got from the patients and they taped that tube to their circle that looked just like this button. And then when they pulled it and it span, spun so many times, it gets to go on really fast, right? You saw the button was moving really fast. You probably couldn't even see the spin in on the camera because it was so fast. So that allows that blood to separate just like the centrifuge lets it. So when they look in the tubes after doing the whirly gig, they see that same separation with all the heavy stuff at the bottom and the light stuff at the top. And if you have malaria, that line in the middle. So they could do it with something as easy as a string and a button without having to spend all the money and find the electricity to use a centrifuge. So it's a really neat way that scientists have found to do science, even places where they couldn't get to electricity. And now you can do it in your own home with just a button and some string.